Let's say I'm given a triangle with a whole bunch of numbers and I want to find the maximum sum of any path down a triangle. So a path might be defined as something where I might go from here to here and then maybe from here to here and here to here and here to here. And the sum of that path has to be the maximum possible. So a common technique to solve this is to just keep taking the maximum number in each row starting from the root. So for example, I can start at 59 and I see that 59's neighbors are going to be 41 and 73. So I'll go down to 73 because that's bigger. And then 73 has 9 and 40. So I'll go to 40 because that's bigger. And then 40 has 6 and 34. And 34 is bigger, so I'll go to 34. And then 34 has 86 and 81. Well, 86 is bigger, so I'll go to 86. And so when I add all this up, I'm going to get a sum of 292. Well, what if I told you that there was actually a larger sum? And that sum is actually going to be acquired by going through the path 59, 41, 120, 53, and then 87. And it seems to defy our original strategy because we always thought that we should pursue the best option at each step. But the issue here was that when we went from 59 to 73, we neglected to see that the 120 all the way on the left would have a significant impact on our maximum sum. And so when you encounter different triangles like this, you're going to see that the strategy of always choosing the largest next neighbor is not always going to be the most efficient. So there has to be some other method that we could pursue. So this is going to be where going from bottom to up is going to be very helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider all the rows starting from the bottom going up. So we're going to iterate through those rows backwards. And then for each row, we're going to look for the best path between the two items in each row. So let's start with this row right here. We'll start in the second to last row. So with this row, we see that 26, the best path from 26 down is going to be from 26 to 51. So we'll connect a path from there to there. And then 53 has neighbors 51 and 87. Well, 53's best path is going to be to 87. So we'll connect that path there. And then we see from six, we have neighbors 87 and 86. Well, 87 is obviously the better choice. So we'll go from six to 87. And then our last item is 34. Well, 34's largest neighbor is 86. So we'll go from 34 to 86. And so we can sum up each of these path lengths as we have right now. So 26 plus 51 is going to be 77. And then 53 plus 87 is going to be 140. And then 6 plus 87 is going to be 93. And then 34 plus 86 is going to be 120. And now we do the same thing, but with this row. So now we have 120, 9, and 40. And this time the neighbors we're considering are not the original neighbor. So not 26, 53, 6, and 34. But instead, we're going to consider these new path sums that we've developed. So 77, 140, 93, and 120. So in this way, each of these sums are going to represent the largest paths that we found from those levels. So starting with 120, we can go either to 77 or 140. It's better to go to 140. So 120 plus 140 is going to be 260. And now we consider 9. So, so we can either go from 9 to 140 or 9 to 93. It's better to go from 9 to 140. So we connect that and we should get a path length of 149. And finally, we have 40. So 40 can go either to 93 or to 120. Well, it's better to go to 120. So we connect that and we get a path length of 160. Next, we go to the previous row. So now we have 41 and 73. So 41 can either go to 260 or 149. It's better to go to the former. So 260 connects to 41. And the sum is going to be 260 plus 41, which is 301. So we'll write 301. And then 73 can either go to 149 or 160. And so it's better to go to the latter. So we'll connect those two and we should get 73 plus 160 is 233. And finally, we reach the first row. And so we can either go from 59 to 301 or 59 to 233. And here's where we see why it was important that we didn't go top to bottom and keep selecting the largest neighbor to go to because even though 73 is a larger neighbor, its path length, its largest path length that we could get is actually smaller than that of 41. So we pursue from 59 to 301 instead. So we go connect these two and we get 301 plus 59 is 360. And so that's going to be our largest path length, not 292. So basically what we did here is we started from down up and we kept finding 
the largest path length between one row and its consecutive, and then one row and two rows above it, and one row and three rows above, and so on and so forth, until we build up to the maximum path length from bottom to top. All right, let's go ahead and implement this in code. So before we get started, let's just take a look at our input. So this was the input that we worked with in the example, and we're going to test our code with this input. So notice how we put this into a different file, and then each line has that respective number of items separated by spaces. So when we go to run this, we're just going to read from this input.txt file, and that's how we're going to find our maximum path sum. Now, if you want to store your data within the Python file itself, you can do that. But just for the purposes of this video, we're just going to put this in a separate file. All right, so let's transition to our code window. So we can start by defining our function. We'll call it def max path sum triangle, and we'll give it a parameter r, and that's gonna be our array. And if you don't want to modify this array itself, you can just create a duplicate, but for the purposes of this video, we don't care about whether the contents of this array are modified. So we will be modifying this array as we find our maximum path. So we can iterate through the rows. So we'll say for row in range. And remember, we started at the second to last row. So we'll have to say length of r minus two. And we wanna go all the way to the top. So negative one and negative one. And then for each of those rows, we want to check each column. So for column in range, length of r at row. And for each one of those columns, we want to say that the array value at that row and column is going to increase by the maximum possible path length from each of its neighbors. So max r bracket row plus one at column or the column that's right next to that. So r bracket row plus one, call plus one. And that's basically it. So the final thing to do is just to return r bracket zero, zero, because that's going to be the topmost element and that'll give us the maximum path. So the thing with this algorithm is it actually gives us the maximum path from any item in our triangle. And so we keep building up and we eventually get to the maximum path for our entire triangle. And this is a really good demonstration of dynamic programming. So let's go ahead and test this code. So we'll say with open input.txt as f, f is our file, and we'll create a new array. Array is equal to blank array. And we're just gonna add all the contents of input.txt into the array. So for line in f, we'll say r.append list map. So we'll convert everything to an int. And the things that we are converting are going to be from line.split at space. And once we have this, we can just print the maximum path sum of r. And we run this and we see that we get 360 as our answer. And if we wanna see each of the steps as they proceed or the final outcome, we can see that the array that we modify is going to contain the maximum path length from each node. So we can say for i in r, print i. And we run this and we see that at each level, we're finding the maximum path length. And these were the numbers that we saw earlier when we were writing this out. And finally, we get the top number as 360. So that's it for this video and I hope this was helpful.